Uh, yo. Good son. Um, finally gonna do the long awaited, uh, tandem tips and tricks video. <laughs> I'm sure no one knew they needed this, but, uh, just thought it might help. Um, just be like different tips and stuff for how to drive in a train of people and just like general etiquette and I don't know, a setup here and there, different things. Um, so this car I'm using 20s in the rear, this is the BTC car pack. I'm using 20s in the rear, 28s in the front, and I think my gears are like 4.7 four because we're running in third gear. But in other cars I'll use up to like uh, 4.10 or 3.91 I think. It really just depends on the track. But in the RX-7, I have a really hard time if I put it above 4.3. Uh, I just get like, it's like no amount of clutch work that I do seems to help me. Other people seem to have no problem, so you kind of just have to like tune for feel, I guess. But um, yeah, so like one of the biggest things, like it's really hard to get more than two or three people in a line. Because as soon as you get two or three people in a line, everyone just gets too close or they don't use brakes or they all just want to be in the front like everyone's just like I want to be up front which you could pass four or five people if you could find a way to do it cleanly like uh, like here we're kind of all staying to the inside so if you went on the outside you could make up a little bit of space but you're really not gonna pass more than like one person um, in a corner like one two people max and even then you might kind of people up so be careful about passing like there's nothing wrong with making a pass but make it a good pass like make it a pass that you know you're not going to kill the person that you're passing um, but let's say that you know you get yourself into a train of people or you get a bunch of people in a lobby and they're all kind of you know doing their thing right so you can see here my brake lights are on because I'm kind of like fluctuating my brakes my pedals are the t3pa pedals and they're actually like really good especially for the brake so I think there's a couple of different ways that you can kind of stick right with people you need to be in like the exact same kind of car setup like an RX-7 with the same gear ratio blah, blah, blah. and then at that point as long as the two people are driving the same way because that's another thing not everyone drives the same not everyone's like full throttle everywhere so you kind of just like, if you're behind someone, you need to respect their line and just kind of like follow their line and uh, try not to murk them out by like tapping their bumper super hard or like sliding into them, like sandwiching them super hard. You have to give them enough space. Like uh, you can see here, like in a lot of ways, because there are so many of us drifting, I'm trying to give decent space. Like I'm not trying to like get right up on these two most of the time. That's partially because you can see how much I'm braking, like I'm kind of just scared to get too close to him. Or just to like go all out. Again, it just depends who you're drifting with. Like some people, like if you're in the lead, you really shouldn't like need to be braking. You should kind of just be like full throttling and feeling out the line. Um, yeah. But if you're behind, you need, like I say, you need to be on the brakes, you need to respect the line. So like what I'm doing here and what I'm doing a lot of the time when I'm following people, um, I'm modulating the gas, I'm really not like hitting the clutch very often unless like I get really stuck. Like if someone brakes so hard that I fall out of boost and my wheels want to stop spinning, I will clutch. But most of the time I'm just like pedal down, you know, modulating the gas and then I'll have my other foot on the brake and I'll just be kind of like feathering it. Like I'll, I'll be on the brake like you can see the red bars my brake so I'm really just on it a little bit, just enough here and there that I slow myself down to match the other person's speed. And like I say, the other way that you can do it is, I think through like clutch work, like if you're really good with the gas and the clutch, you might be able to modulate yourself just right, but not that good with the clutch, I can switch gears. But my following is pretty good, it's just, it all comes down to just like modulating my brake and stuff. But I do have like issues with, um, like, if I get people that drive the same as me, like, there's a couple people that just drive, like, all out, then I can stick on them pretty good without having to use the brake. Like I say, most other people, I'm kind of having to modulate my speed. And the big thing with using the brake is you can come to almost, like, a complete stop in some of the cars. Like, not, 
The World Drift Tour cars, you gotta be easier with the brake because you just have less horsepower to spin the wheels. But in like the BDC cars and the Gravy Garage cars, you can come to pretty much a full stop and just keep your tires spinning. Like just holding down the gas all the way, well in boost, and they're just like mashing the brake. So you can come to just about like a full stop or even go like half the speed that you might normally go by just holding down the brake and kind of modulating it. But again, you have to be kind of careful with it because if you mash it down too far, um, you can fall out of boost. And if you fall out of boost, your tires are just going to stop spinning. So you got to be careful with it. Another thing you can do with your brake is uh, like you can use the brake not only to slow down, but to kind of like push yourself out further in the corner. Like if I was to tap the brake or kind of hold the brake here, I would go further off the edge. So that's another way that you can kind of like extend your drift a little bit. So here, we've been going for a little while now, and at a certain point here, I'll just get, and I get like ADHD, and I just start wanting to go wide, because, I don't know, bored. Like, uh, I like to go super wide and just like bounce my butt off the walls most of the time. So there, that guy did a good clean pass, I was going super wide, and he went, you know, the short route. Which, if you want to catch up to people, another way that you could do it is uh, just hit like the inner line all the time. You just hit the inner line and you go a little bit slower uh, so your tires aren't spinning as much. And you can use that to catch up. Yeah, like right there, I kind of like gave space. That guy not giving space uh, for me. And it's one of the things where it's like. You can follow someone super hard, and it's kind of just up to them when they reset. You know what I mean? Like, hopefully if they start to spin out, or they hit something, or they're pretty sure they're going to hit something, they'll just reset. You know what I mean? So you can keep the train going, because that's one of the worst things, is overly aggressive people um, in the train, or just, like, people that refuse to reset. Like, if you're the second or third man out of, like, five or six people, which, again, is kind of rare to get that many people in a line. Like, more than three people, you're only going to go a lap or two. <laughs> like, you'd be lucky to, you know, keep it going. Even on some of these, like, more simple tracks. Yeah. Here, I just can't really make up the space that well. Like, I'm not braking or anything. Kind of just, like, slowly trying to work my way up. And then I'm close again. And a lot of it's just, like, predicting how much braking I need. Like, I could tell that guy was a little out of line, so I gave it a little bit of extra braking. I'm just trying to keep on people. This car pack's not as bad about like heat soaking your tires. Like, um, if you run really low air in your tires, your tires are gonna get pretty hot. And in some of the car packs, like definitely the World Drift Tour car pack, you just lose grip. Like, you start to lose a lot of grip after a couple of laps because your tires are just so smoking hot. So, I don't know if you do that. I just like like a weird scene in a movie when I thought of that yeah but yeah so here like I said we've been going for like a hot minute this is longer than you usually get to go with people it's pretty decent I don't like Brooklyn Park as much it's one of the things where it's like there's really only a couple cop popular car packs and like uh, maps that people run and a lot of times it's just Brooklyn Park it's just like circles and circles and circles I've just done it so much this and ADC, it's just like, I've been there for ages. I wish Lime Rock would come back. I wish people would make Lime Rock popular again. That track's a little bit more fun, I think, than uh, Brooklyn Park. There's a lot more cuts. You can kind of cut across the middle of the track to catch people. But yeah, I mean, we're just going for it, dude. Like I said, I think that's like all the things I can really think of. You know. You don't want to go full throttle, like some people go full throttle max angle. If I go full throttle max angle, my car will kind of like eat itself sometimes, especially when the tires get hot. It'll just like, you'll go super hard into a turn and it'll just want to keep like rotating. So, just getting too much heat in the tires. Oh, and in these cars, like um, this is the only car pack that I can think of that has like an extra thing to it. Uh, as far as like drift car packs, you need to put the race gas on. Like, if you don't have the race gas on, it's terrible. It's, like, it's half the horsepower, basically. So, yeah. Make sure you put race gas on. Most people use, um, 
in this car pack most people use soft tires in adc a lot of people use like the uh the slicks or whatever i use the streets i like less grip like uh yeah i just like less grip that was kind of my fault i hit that guy um also kind of his fault because he didn't reset